Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you, yes you, make your game dev dreams become a reality. This is the fourth part of the AI series where we're spawning NavMesh agents at runtime. This is really cool because it allows you to not place all of your NavMesh agents in the scene and allows them to spawn at random locations. I had a lot of trouble implementing this at first in Mama Survival. There were a bunch of weird issues that I got with the NavMesh agent being a pooled object and it was just a, it was a nightmare honestly trying to get rid of all of these issues. So you're going to learn from my mistakes in this video and we're just going to implement it where it's smooth sailing, no issues at all. We're going to use object pooling in this video. If you don't know what object pooling is, I've got you covered. Check out this video where I go over object pooling, what it is, and why you need it. I'm not going to cover object pooling at all in this video, but we are going to use the scripts that we created in that video in this video. I'm really excited for this, so let's hop in and check it out. I know, I know the scene, it's different. I made a bunch of changes and you're not gonna follow along exactly from the previous one. I'm sorry, I needed a way bigger scene and just adding in me changing how the scene works uh, doesn't really fit in the tutorial for what we're trying to do. But the layout of the scene is not important. The layout of this level, there's nothing special. There's, it's just a little bit wider so the agents can get around easier and there's a second floor. Since we're going to be creating several new scripts, I'm going to start organizing the scripts folder a little bit. I'll create a folder called enemy and move enemy movement into that folder. We're also going to be using the object pool from the previous video. So if you don't know what an object pool is, please go back, check out that video. We're going to be utilizing the exact same scripts that we created in that video in this one to pool our enemies. So I'm not going to go into what object pooling is in this one. I'm copy pasting the scripts we use there and putting them in here. Since we're spawning enemies, I'm also going to create a script called enemy spawner, which will be responsible for spawning the enemies. And of course, we also need a script called enemy, which will be the base class for the enemy that will have references to all the other enemy behaviors and will be the poolable object that we use in the object pool. In the enemy class, it's going to extend the poolable object class so we can use it in our object pool. So we'll put the enemy movement, we'll put the nav mesh agent, and I'll add an int health here. We're going to use that in a future tutorial. If we open up the enemy spawner script, this one will be responsible for, again, creating all of the enemies and spawning them into our scene. Since the enemy movement requires a player to follow, we'll add a public transform player and assign that to the enemies as we spawn them. We'll put a public int number of enemies to spawn so we can control in the inspector how many enemies we'd like to spawn. We'll put a public float spawn delay so we can control how long between each spawn we should wait. And we'll put a public list enemy enemy prefabs, which will just be references to the enemy prefabs we'd like to spawn. Then I'll create a private dictionary of int object pool, which will be the enemy object pools. This will be how we manage the object pools for each enemy. On awake, we will loop through all of the enemy prefabs that we have and create an object pool instance for each enemy prefab. We do that by doing this for loop and then enemy object pools dot add I. And then the second argument will be the object pool dot create instance passing in the enemy prefab. And I'm going to use the number of enemies to spawn for each enemy type. So we always make sure we have enough enemies created to not have to create more at runtime. And that returns us the instance of the object pool that we can then reference by enemy prefab index. On start, what we'll do is start a coroutine to start spawning the enemies. And in that spawn enemies coroutine, we will create a wait for seconds that waits for the spawn delay. I'll create a local variable spawned enemies, which will just be the counter for how many enemies we've spawned so far. And while that number is less than the total number of enemies to spawn, we will spawn some enemies. It would be nice to be able to choose how to spawn enemies. So what I'm going to do is create an enum called spawn method and have round robin where it will just cycle through each enemy prefab one at a time and maybe a random one. So that way I don't know which one will spawn next. So round robin will give me a predictable spread of enemies and random will be, well, random. So if the spawn method is round robin, I'll create a function called spawn round robin. I'll create a function called spawn round robin enemy and pass in the number of spawned enemies so far. in spawn round robin enemy. I will calculate the spawn index by doing spawned enemies modulus enemy prefabs.count. In case you're not familiar with how this works, we'll use some examples here. 
if the spawned enemies is zero I, and I have two enemy prefabs, that will give me a zero result. If I have one spawned enemy and I still have two enemy prefabs, that will give me one. And once I hit two, there will again be the result will then be zero again. So I'll spawn the first one. If the enemy spawn method is random, I will just spawn a random enemy. And I will call this do spawn enemy function with a random integer between zero and the count of the prefabs. In do spawn enemy, we will just get an instance of the poolable object from the object pool by doing enemy object pools indexed by spawn index dot get object. If the poolable object is not null, we'll get the enemy script from the poolable object. And then we need to place this enemy somewhere on the nav mesh, right? So there's a few ways that you can try to figure this out. I'm going to use a nav mesh triangulation. This will let me choose a particular vertex on the nav mesh and it will give me that position. So I can spawn an enemy on any vertex within a nav mesh. I'll take the nav mesh triangulation. I will pick a random range between zero and the number of vertices in that triangulation. And then I will do nav mesh sample position to find the nearest point on the nav mesh, which should be exactly that point. And I will put that the output of that into nav mesh hit that I named hit. Then I will do enemy.agent.warp to the hit position. This will align the nav mesh agent exactly to that position. So whenever we enable the nav mesh agent, it will find the nav mesh correctly and we'll be able to start moving immediately. Then we'll assign the enemy movement player to the enemy spawner player, and then we will enable the nav mesh agent. If we head over to the enemy movement script, we see that we put it where on start, it will start following the player, which was fine before, but now we're dynamically creating them. And we'd like to tell it when we would like it to start chasing instead of doing it on start. So I'll rename start to follow target and I'll create a public void start chasing that will call from the enemy spawner. In start chasing, we will start the coroutine to follow target. And what I'll do is add a reference to a coroutine and I'll call it follow coroutine and assign that to the return of start coroutine. This way we can check whenever we're going to call start chasing. If this enemy is already following the player, we won't start another coroutine. And if we do have a follow coroutine already running, we'll log a warning so we know later that we messed something up and we need to investigate why we're calling start chasing multiple times on an enemy while they're alive. If we head back to enemy spawner, after we set the player on enemy movement and we've enabled the nav mesh agent, we will tell the enemy movement to start chasing. Let's do some small refactor that will improve our performance. The calculation of the triangulation is pretty expensive, so I'm gonna move that to start instead of having it done in do spawn enemy, because remember do spawn enemy is called every time we wanna spawn an enemy. We don't wanna calculate that nav mesh triangulation each time. So I'll move that up. And the other thing I see here is when I'm sampling the position, I use zero, which is not right. We should use negative one for all areas, or we should use one for walkable. I'm going to use negative one. Based on your game and your nav mesh, you may use a different value here. Before we hop back to the editor, let's open up enemy script one more time and add a public override void on disable. So we're overriding the poolable objects on disable. We're calling that but we will also disable the nav mesh agent when we re-add this enemy to the pool. That's really important because when we spawn the enemies, we want the nav mesh agent to be disabled so they don't automatically try to place themselves on a nav mesh at an invalid position. If we hop back over to the Unity editor, we'll create an empty game object and call it enemy manager. We'll drag the basic enemy into the assets folder, so we'll create a prefab from it. We'll disable the nav mesh agent on the enemy so it doesn't try to automatically place itself on a nav mesh and give us errors or warnings. We'll also add the enemy script. We'll drag the nav mesh agent and the movement to the enemy. 
And if we select the enemy manager game object, we'll attach the enemy spawner script, tie in the player transform. We'll drag the basic enemy to the enemy prefabs. And if I click play, we can see the enemies are dynamically spawning about a second apart in random locations on the nav mesh, and then they start following the player. Beautiful. I hope you got a lot of value out of this video and understand how to spawn nav mesh agents into your scene in your game. In the next video, what we're going to do is set up different enemy types where they have different nav mesh agent configurations, different stats, that kind of stuff. And we're going to do that through a scriptable object. If you have any questions, if you have a suggestion for a topic, or if you have implemented nav meshes, nav mesh agents, and AI as a result of watching this video or this series, drop a comment down below and I'll see you on the next video.